we are evaluating the following rational expression. We are taking the integral with respect to x. So recall that in the method of partial fractions, if you have f of x equals to px divided by qx and the degree of the denominator is more than the degree of the numerator. So here you have your qx, which in this case is equal to just 3, which is more than the degree of the numerator, which is just 1. No long division is needed. So you don't need any long division. As long as they have the same degree, you have to start by taking the long division. In the next step, we start breaking down the denominator into smaller pieces so we can recognize the pattern. x cubed plus 3x can be written as x times x squared plus 3. So as you can see, you have a linear expression and you have a quadratic expression. But this quadratic expression has discriminant, which is negative. So b squared minus 4ac is 0 minus 12, which is negative. So discriminant is negative. You don't have any real root. No, real root. So what's the meaning of that? It means that the rational expression, which is 2x minus 3 divided by x cubed plus 3x, can be written down as the very first fraction belongs to the linear part, which is a divided by x plus the second fraction belongs to the quadratic expression, which is, you can write it as ex plus f or any other letter that you feel comfortable using. Either is fine. So you have ex plus f divided by your x squared plus 3. So in the method of partial fractions, first we broke down the denominator into smaller pieces. We tried our best to factor out the denominator. Here you end up with x, which is a linear term, times x squared plus 3, which is a quadratic expression. But for this quadratic expression, the discriminant is negative, so there is no real root. So it means that it cannot be broken down into distinct product of linear expressions. So it means that the rational expression can be broken down into a divided by x plus ex plus f over x squared plus 3. As you remember, now we take common denominator. When you're taking common denominator, you can form a system of linear equations, or you can basically use some shortcuts. Either is fine. So on the left-hand side, so the let me write down the common denominator first for you. The common denominator here is x times x squared plus 3. This is the best common denominator that you can use. So when you take the common denominator, the denominators are the same. We just set the numerators equal to each other. The numerator on the left is 2x minus 3. And on the right-hand side, you have a times x squared plus 3 plus x times ex plus f. Uh, 
Okay, perfect. So let's distribute A into parentheses, then distribute X into parentheses, and set these equal to each other. On the left-hand side, we have 2X minus 3. This is your first numerator on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, when you take common denominator, the numerator becomes this product between A and X squared plus 3 and X and EX plus F. So here you end up with A times X squared plus A times 3 or 3A plus EX squared. So here you have EX squared plus f times x. Now we are comparing the left-hand side and right-hand side. Let me see. Hmm. Jumped. So here we have EX squared plus FX. So now let's compare left-hand side and right-hand side. Left-hand side and right hand side. On the left hand side we have 2x minus 3 which is a linear term and a constant term. On the right hand side you have quadratic terms. Pay attention here. Your quadratic term is ax squared and ex squared but there is nothing on the left hand side. It means that on the left hand side you have 0x squared. There is no x squared. It means that the coefficient of x squared is officially zero. So what's the meaning of that? It means that the combination of these two must be equal to zero x squared. Well, it means that a plus e is zero. Okay, what about the linear term? My linear term here says f times x must be equal to 2 times x. So 2 is equal to f. So we found the value for f. So far, so good. And then here you have a constant term. 3a must be equal to negative 3. So negative 3 is equal to 3 times a. What's the meaning of that? It means that a is equal to negative 1. So we found the value for a. We found the value for f. If you plug this guy in here, you can find the value for e negative 1 plus e is equal to 0. So e is just 1. Very good. We found all the missing pieces, everybody. Take a look. Let us copy this guy down here and then take the integral. So, so far we have negative one divided by x And then you have E, which is 1, and F, which is 2. So F is 2. We're not going to copy down 1. Now you can take the integral. The integral 
on the left hand side with respect to dx must be equal to the integral on the right hand side. So this integral can be written as the integral of negative dx divided by x plus the integral of x plus 2 divided by x squared plus 3 dx. The integral on, the, on this side, this guy here, is easy to calculate. Why is that? Because the integral of du divided by u is ln of absolute value of u plus c. So this guy can be written as minus ln of absolute value of x. But for the integral here, let us separate the fraction into the summation of two fractions. You get the integral of x dx divided by x squared plus 3 plus the integral of 2 dx divided by x squared plus 3. Very good. For the middle integral, let u be x squared plus 3, du is 2x dx. So if you multiply and divide by 2, you already have your du, du divided by u. So, so far we calculated the first integral, which is negative ln of absolute value of x plus a half integral of du divided by u which is ln of absolute value of x squared plus 3 plus 2 times the integral of dx divided by x squared plus 3. For this integral, remember that. If you have the integral of du divided by u squared plus a squared. This is 1 over a inverse tangent of u over a. So this is tangent inverse or arc tangent, whichever you feel more comfortable writing. Either is fine in terms of calculation. They have the same meaning, u over a plus constant of integration. But a squared is equal to 3. a is square root of 3. So finally, we can write our integral as negative ln of absolute value of x plus a half ln of, this guy is always positive, so you can get rid of absolute value. You end up with parenthesis. x squared plus 3, close up the parenthesis, plus 2, divided by square root of 3 times inverse tangent of x divided by square root of 3 plus constant of integration.